Hey folks, Dave here. I've got some uh, bamboo bowl toppers to cut. A nice lady asked me to do this a while back and I've been dragging my feet. So Margaret, here you go. I'm doing this. And I'm going to cut a template out of this cardboard. Uh, I got the idea from uh, the YouTube channel, The Edge of Tech. Jim over there made a, made a coaster template using some poster board. And I thought, I'm just cutting wood up endlessly, trying to make templates and jigs to do things like this. And I'm sitting on a stack of cardboard, and I burn cardboard quite often. So I'm going to try this, and if it works good, uh, this is how I'll be doing it from now on. So I'm going to take you guys through this. I'll throw up a picture of the bowls. It's a whole set, but we're going to do one. We'll do the smaller one. So if I have to damage one, it'll be the smaller one. So the template will be the size of this bottom edge here, which is five and seven sixteenths inches. And I'll figure out what that is in millimeters, and that's what we'll do. Uh, so I'll take you through that, and we'll see how it works out. All right, here's a photo of the bowl. And then we'll get into light burn. Okay, here is a photo of the bowl set we're working with and we're doing this top bowl right here. Okay, so to catch the lip of that topper uh, to make this template, we just need to grab a circle and the lips, hold down the shift key, drag it out, let go of the mouse, go up and click your selector tool, and then it turns out 5 and 7 16 inches is 138.112. So up top, make sure your lock is on. We want this to change proportionate. So select. Put in 138.112. Okay, so now we have our circle. Uh, so we're just going to cut this out. So select. Go to your cut layer, and that is way more power than we need for uh, for cardboard. So I've never cut cardboard, so we may uh, we may have a fire, but I got a fire extinguisher nearby. So I uh, will just make it a speed of five and a power of thirty percent. Surely that'll do it. Forty watt laser. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's cut this out and see how it works. Okay, looks pretty good. So now, we'll just orient this that way. Oh, that fits pretty good. And that's in there. Hopefully it holds down enough. There we go. Readjust the focus on the laser. See if I can do it without bumping the camera. And that should work pretty good. Okay, so we're back in light burn. And we're going to keep the same size of this circle. Uh, so the the graphic we put on will, will not get too close to the edges of the top. Uh, so remember, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll in and out. 
you can push down and move the entire canvas around. Uh, so we're going to turn this into a tool first. So select your circle, go down to the bottom, and select T1. Uh, now you'll notice at the top right there's no output. Okay, so now we want to get a graphic and put in the center. And there will be um, links down in the description so you can go get these free vectors. So select that, grab the corner to resize it, and it should snap into place. I'll make it a little bit smaller. It should snap to center, uh, and to know you can go up top to the, to the settings tab, and here is snap to objects and snap to grid. So if you have those selected, it'll usually snap into place, but to, to test that, you can select your object, then push shift, select the outer ring, and then click the bullseye. And if it wasn't centered, it will be. Okay, so now we're centered. The tool is in the same position, position that it was when we cut out the cardboard. Uh, so now we're going to write Nana's Kitchen. So go over and get your uh, text tool. And we want to be able to do this with a score line. Uh, and if you'll select Academy, Academy engraved, you'll be able to score and it'll still look look like it's engraved. It's one of the few that actually does that. So let's type out Nana's. We'll do all caps. And then click your selector tool. And you can, well, let's get this the correct size we want first. Okay, let me get in a little closer and notice that there's a little blue dot here in the top right. You can select that and then you can bend the text. And then you can move it around and see if it's a good size. And that looks a little big. So we will use Control Z to go back, just get it back to where it's straight. And then we'll grab the corner and resize it a little bit. That looks a little better. Now you can grab your dot again and just start to bend it until it fits exactly the way you want it. I got to make this look pretty good because I've been hanging on to the job for too long. getting busy with other things and you know okay so you can leave that selected and then shift select your outer ring and click vertical alignment up top and then it'll pull it into place so now we just want to copy that duplicate duplicate pull it down and we're going to straighten it back out. And then we're going to write kitchen. Just double click inside and it'll give you the, the line at the top. And it's still a little bent, but it doesn't matter. Click your selection tool up top. Grab your blue dot and stretch it the other way, bend it the other way. Let me get this a little more centered. And then see if you can get that to where it looks about right. Leave it selected. Shift, select your outer tool. And then again with vertical alignment. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to put some, uh, maybe some utensils in the center. So we go back to the free vector files, kitchen utensils, and we don't need all of these of course. 
I think we'll just probably use the spoon and the spatula. Uh-oh. Got to ungroup usually these things. So ungroup. And it's probably best to move it over to the side so it doesn't get intermingled with your uh, with your other vector. And I think maybe these two. This spoon will keep. And this spatula will keep. And everything else we'll get rid of. That's a lot of utensils, so you can fix you up some of these, and you got plenty to choose from. So let's get these to a good size, and I think we'll just cross them over like so. If you grab the corner, once you select one. And it's not grouped together. That's not good. So control Z when you do something like that. Um, I'm going to control Z back out until I move it. Control Z is your friend. I know I say that a lot, but it is the absolute truth. You see, no more trouble. So when you separate the vectors out, just select the ones that you're using and group everything in there together. Save yourself some headaches. Now we can uh, bend them and cross them over. All right, so we will take this one this way. And this one this way. And notice when you're, when you're selecting, if you pull from the left side, you get a red line and to select something, you have to grab everything. If you, if you come from the right, you get a green line, and all you have to do is touch it, and it will select. Okay, so we got these crossed over. Let's select them all. Group that together. We will pull it over here and resize it a little bit, make it look right. And then on this one, you want to leave selected, shift, select the outer edge, and then hit this bullseye. And now we're completely centered. Okay, so now we want to make everything inside a score with a line. So I've got uh, O2 set up for a score. And if it doesn't work out right, we will, we will do it again. So when you, when you run a job, if you, especially if you're engraving or scoring, just leave it in place. Don't touch anything. Try to think it through and then run the job again before you, before you move anything and you'll have a, you'll have another shot at it. If you move something, uh, you make a mess, and I've done that plenty of times. It's not pretty. Okay, so we have a line, and this is a 40-watt laser, so I've got a speed of 60 and a power of 40. Uh, we'll see how that works out. It works out pretty good on, on, on pine. Uh, I don't remember if I've used these settings on bamboo or not, but we'll see. We'll know in just a minute. And when I'm moving from home, uh, which is zero, zero on mine, I do the square frame button first to get it into position. And then I'll do the circular frame if it's a circular object after that.
And as far as my eyes can tell, that looks pretty good. So we're going to hit start, send the code over, and see what happens. Well, folks, that looks good. So let me clean this up a little bit with some uh, white vinegar and a soft cloth. And I'll be back to show it to you, cleaned up. Okay, folks, well, there it is cleaned up. Uh, just a little white vinegar and a soft cloth. So this is just a score line. Uh, and like I said, if you'll use the Academy font and use score, you can... You can do this a lot quicker than normal. This took uh, just over two minutes. And um, so the vectors I'll put out there are free. And since this template worked out so well, if I had more of these, I could just lay them down and crank them out. So I think in the future, I'm going to hang on to more cardboard and do this rather than chopping up... Uh, so much wood like I've I've been doing trying to trying to make jigs and try to save them and get them just right so I'll be using the cardboard much more often and like I said before uh, Jim over at the edge of tech uh, gave me the idea and I appreciate it so folks I appreciate you watching uh, I know Miss Margaret Nana appreciates me doing this and finally finishing it. I will get the other two bowls in the set done today. So thanks for watching. Uh, Y'all take care and we'll see you next time. Thank you.